An international bank issues its traveler credit cards worldwide. When a customer makes a purchase using a traveler card in a currency different from the customer's home currency, the bank converts the purchase price at the daily foreign exchange rate and then charges a 4% fee on the converted cost. Sarah lives in the United States but is on vacation in India. She used her traveler card for a purchase that cost 602 rupees Indian currency. The bank posted a charge of 988 to her account that included the 4% fee. What foreign exchange rate in Indian rupees per one US dollar did the bank use for Sarah's charge? Round your answer to the nearest whole number. Okay, so we've got 602 rupees, rupees, and we're going to convert this to dollars. We'll call it D dollars. And then we're going to apply a 4% fee. And when we do that, we're going to get the final charge, which is 988. So let's work backwards from this 988 and make the connection back to the rupees, and then we'll hopefully be able to get the exchange rate. Because right here is the exchange rate. Whatever converts us from rupees to dollars, it happens here, and then we add the 4% on, and we get that. So this D, with 4% added onto it, is going to get us 988. So remember, to increase D by 4%, you multiply it by 1 plus the percent. In other words, 1 plus the rate as a decimal. So this, in this case, 1 plus 0.04. So we're going to multiply this by 1.04, and that's going to get us 9.88. So let's go ahead and figure out. I'll use this one, actually. Let's go ahead and figure out the actual dollar amount after the conversion, but before the tax. So 9.88 divided by 1.04 gets us 9.5. So $9.50. Now, this is the rupees. Um, this is the, the dollar conversion of the 602 rupees. So we want to know how many rupees per dollar. So all we really need to do is say, okay, it's 602 rupees over $9.50. So we'll divide this and we'll get a unit of rupees per dollar. So 602 divided by 9.5. 63. And so that's 63. We're going to round it to the nearest rupee. So it's 63 rupees per dollar. And that's your answer. Again, the challenge of this question, and especially of the next one, is reading this mess and coming to an understanding of what's going on. Uh, again, the key is to, as in all these problems, write out your information, come up with a scheme through your diagram, as we did here, to kind of get a sense of how the problem is going to look like when you work through the steps. But otherwise, it's you know multiplying by a percent. We've seen this before, very important, something to emphasize later. And then finding this ratio, which is not too bad either. Uh, but putting setting this up, I think, is the challenge. Once you do that, if you know the percent stuff, you know the ratio stuff, you should be fine. This is a medium, so it is a pretty challenging question.